Do you remember a billion years ago, more or less, give or take a billion, Thunderfoot was doing his transcontinental drives and he would have his dash cam on and he was doing time lapses so that you could watch the continent rush past without having to wait, you know, hours and hours and hours of original time. And I thought, that's kind of a nice effect. I liked that. I enjoyed it. But when he got into towns, you'd get that kind of and he'd stop at a light and then lurching sort of thing, which was rather unpleasant. And I, I pondered upon that uh, for a long time and I thought, well, what if there was a different kind of lapse? Not time lapse, but something I'll call X lapse. It's taken me ages to get around to doing this. One of the first things I needed to get done was tap in to the speedo on my car. And that can be done through the diagnostic port there. I'm very excited to receive this. I've been waiting for this for a little while. It's, um, it's a little kit OBD2 reader that I got from that. So I've got the iron ready to go. You can tell it's hot just by touching it and you'll hear it and then you'll feel pain. And you know it's ready. So besides the iron uh, and a cup of tea, of course, I need the net because it comes without paper instructions. Okay, quick inspection to make sure everything's good. All joints double checked. Let's see if uh, USB recognizes it. Plug in the USB and see. Have a green light, that's good. And that is the right answer. It's time to up the ante and plug it into something expensive now. Okay. Oh, that's in. So here it goes with the key, and let's check for smoke. There's now power. And then I had to do some computery things too. I wrote the data logging software in Python. Well, software, that's a rather overblown phrase for it. A script. I downloaded a Python OBD reader module to help me with that. And then by logging the time and the speed, I was able to figure out the distance that I travel at any time. And I synced that up with my camera and I went driving around. Uh... Proof of concept, let me just start the logger. Uh, that log. Oh, come on. Maybe dink. There it goes. I'll show you that. Tick, 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 tick. So you can sync to the numbers. All right. From now on, it's all a matter of just going off the timings. And here we go. It's pretty darn wet. The mirror's in the way. Damn. That's invalid token. That gives me an opportunity to turn you off and readjust everything. As you could probably tell, I was bald when I was driving around doing that. So that must be after I shaved my head for Movember. 
Hello. Well, I found that footage again recently, and I found the logs as well that I'd created while I was driving. So, I figured I'd just finish off the project. I'd do the software that I needed and uh, try and synchronize the frames that I wanted from, from my data. So the idea with X-Labs is I was going to take frames that were approximately equidistant apart in terms of distance on the road. So what I would have is a constant velocity video. And to do that I needed to mess around with FFmpeg. I used some Perl to massage my original log data into the frames that I actually wanted to capture. Then I had to find some keyframes based on the timestamps that were showing on the computer. And, well, I'll post all the technical details on my blog page, fluffymcdeath.com, which is mostly a very quiet place, but I'll post this. So finally, after I processed the video, I got this little piece of footage, me driving about 4.5 kilometers at a constant velocity of roughly mm, 160. Okay, I have to start up the, uh, the logging process again because it crapped out. Here we go. Camera seat belted in. Let's get her going. Breaking. Was it even interesting? Would I do it again? I don't know. It was a pain in the ass. Perhaps the second time would be easier, but I'm not sure if I'm that keen on it. Other people can do it. I'll leave my code and my experiences on my blog site, fluffymcdeath.com, if I get around to writing it up. But you know, I was thinking you don't need OBD anymore to do these things. If you have a phone with GPS, you have enough positional data and you've even got a camera you can probably do the whole process right in your phone if someone would write the software <laughs>